have a Christmas tree of some equivalent thereof, so come with me to your Christmas tree for just a minute. You know what it looks like. Take a look at it. I'd like you to imagine right in the center of it a plain white envelope. It's just an envelope that's sitting right there in the center of the tree. I think that's pretty important. And with that in mind, let me ask you this particular question. Where is your Christmas? I said to somebody the other day, where is your Christmas? And they said, it's still in the trunk of the car. <laughs> Another lady said, our Christmas is under the tree. Somebody else said, our Christmas is the family get-together. Somebody said, our Christmas is trimming the tree and getting all of the stuff ready. Um, where is your Christmas? Just exactly where is it? And what's it all about? See, these passages of Scripture are interesting because what they say is there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the world that's outside us. There are lots of circumstances that are out there, but they're not in here. And if Christmas has anything whatsoever to say to us, it ought to be that the outside has to be inside or it's not the real thing. It's a wonderful illustration that across the years has been a treasure to me about a family that went to a Christmas Eve service at a Disciples of Christ church. It was a pastor and his family. And they went to the Christmas Eve service, and when the wife said, I want to go to that Christmas Eve communion at 11 o'clock, the wife said, but you don't have to preach. <laughs> and he's, uh, I, no, he said, the wife wanted to go, he said, um, but I, I don't have to preach. And uh, she said, honey. And he said, okay, we'll go. So they went with their two children to the service, and it was real sweet, and the disciples, you know, have communion at all their services, and they pass the communion up and down the aisle. And so there, here's Daddy, uh, and here's the little son, and here's Mama, and then the little girl. And so the communion comes down the aisle, and they pass by the little boy because you have to be baptized to get communion, you know. And the little boy reaches out and grabs hold of the communion uh, plate. And... Uh, the, the elder is trying to tell, tell him to let go, you know. And, and the daddy says, son, we're visiting with somebody else. Let go of the communion plate. And the little boy said, no. And the daddy said, what? And the boy said, no. And the daddy said, son, they think you're too young to take communion. You need to let the communion plate go. And he said, I can't. I'm not. And I won't. And the daddy said, what do you want? He said, I want to take communion. And the daddy said to him, Johnny, do you know what it's about? I think so, he said. It's about the Jesus outside me becoming the Jesus inside me. And I want it now. And the daddy said, take communion. And he did, and then he turned to his wife and kissed her on the lips and said, Merry Christmas, Jenny. Where is our Christmas? Can you still find Jesus? You know, lots of people deserve some credit because they're willing to look for the good stuff. The scriptures say, earnestly desire the more important gifts, the more significant things. But what we do is we think that there's something wrong with us if we don't get exactly the right gift or a gift that costs a certain amount of money or something. And the amazing thing about all the gift giving is that the one thing that matters is the motivation to give the gift. Is the caring about, the loving about, or whatever it is that causes us to give the gift. Our family is complex. We don't all do things the same way. And that little thing that I had no earthly idea, thank you so much, dear Carol, that she was going to read today, was a gift that I gave to our family because at that particular Christmas, we were in crisis. Some of us do things perfectly and on time. And some of us do things imperfectly and late. And what I wanted to say was, hey, we're different and it's okay. I think that's a Christmas experience. Can we still find Jesus? Well, you got to go. You got to be willing. You got to write it. You have to read it. You have to hear it. You know, if it's a little Christmas thing. And a lot of times you and I are saying, I'm so busy doing all the preparations for the holidays that I'm too exhausted to experience Christmas. So the question keeps on coming back to me and in my own heart can we still find Jesus? Can we go to the place where this little baby? was born. 
and recognize that's nice in terms of history, but what really is important is, can the power of God that was present in that child, in some way which is mysterious, because when we talk about Jesus, we're brought into the divine presence, and him is the fullness of God revealed. So it is a mystery, but at the very same time, it's a kind of mystery that completes our lives, that encourages our minds and hearts and souls and strength, and gives us a chance to be more alive than we ever were, and maybe perhaps for the first time, to be alive to God, to be alive to God. Just a few weeks ago, a young man walking out of this church shook my hand real hard, and with his face just as sober as he could be, he said, Jesus was born in my heart today. Nobody can make you. Nobody ought to. Nobody can take you. You've got to go on your own. But if you'll go with those shepherds and those wise men, and all the rest that dared to understand that faith involves some seeking and then some finding, then maybe the heart and mind and soul of Christmas will come to you, come in to you. One thing more, actually two. <laughs> This church gives me a real bad time about one thing more, you know, because I always do that. When the outside of Christmas, the trimmings, the celebrations and all becomes the inside of Christmas, isn't it curious what Jesus said about what really ought to be on one's inside? Not just tithing mint and common and paying attention to all the little decorations and stuff, but the weightier things like justice and mercy, like faith and like hope and like love. And that's what happens when Christmas gets to you. When Christmas gets into you, you begin to ask questions about, is this just, is this right, is this good? Not just for me and mine, but is this just, is this right, is this good for other people? And God gave me mercy. Why do I resent it when God gives somebody else mercy? I've actually heard people say, I think they got away with too much, you know. That means that somebody extended mercy to them. I'm not going to work that out, you know. That's just sort of the human thing. We smile about it every time we say it, you know. We want justice for them and mercy for us. Right? Can't help but smile. But when Christmas gets into you, there's a kind of a faith, kind of a hope, and a kind of love that is larger than, as you prayed earlier, the circumstance, the environment, the misunderstanding, the put-downs of it. And just real passing, let me say, quick passing, let me just say to you, I can't figure this out to save my soul. And I'm not one of these guys that's anti-media all the time, because I think there's some good stuff on the media. But why do they choose the Christmas season to talk about whether Jesus really was born in Bethlehem or whatever? Why do they do that? You know why? Maybe you might say they want to be historically accurate, you know? But they don't know who we are. And they don't know what Christmas is. It's not Bethlehem. It's not a long time ago. It's not a thousand miles away. It's that somehow or the other when you say, be born in me today, God somehow occupies that question and fills that empty place. Preaching is a dialogue. It's never a monologue. It doesn't sound like it because you all haven't had much of a chance to speak back today. You could if you want to, but we'd never get out of here. But on Wednesday nights, we love to do that. We dialogue, and we have fun on Wednesday. I wish some of you would come. We have a good bit of room on Wednesday <laughs> night. Um, but I love that talking back and forth, and I can remember any number of incidences. But one time in a dialogue, I finally got talking about Christmas, and the daddy said, I'm copping out to Christmas. I'm tired of it. He said, I don't think it has anything to do with anything of value, anything important. Uh, he said, it's all trimmings, and uh, there's no meat to it. He said, I'm out of it. And so the wife said, what can I do for him? Well, he was a soccer coach. And um, this dialogue, this is some of the resource from you guys to me. This is where this came from. Uh, so he was a soccer coach, and so they played a little inner city team, and the kids they played, they beat them. They beat them bad. That made them feel badly. And, but they noticed that the inner city kids had ragged shoes and they had no uniforms and they just didn't look really bad. That's all there was to it. So when Christmas came, Daddy begrudgingly went down for the gathering around the tree for the giving of the presents and uh, there was a white envelope, plain white envelope, right in the middle of the tree. 
And they gave all the other presents, and they did everything that should be done. And then um, the daddy said, what's that uh, envelope? And the wife said, that's my Christmas gift to you. And he said, oh, for me. And so he went and he got it, and he read it. And it said, um, for Christmas, we have bought that little inner city soccer team uniforms and tennis shoes and some brand new socks. And that began this new tradition. And so the next year, the white envelope was there, and it was an older couple that got burned out, and they helped them get a refrigerator and a stove. And the years went on, and sad to say, because it's a real story, the daddy developed cancer. And after a long, powerful struggle died, and the wife was in grief because it was a few months before Christmas, and she didn't know how to do Christmas. And they had three kids, after all. And she said, that has been a treasure. That has been valuable. And she said, so I'm going to have it in the center of the tree. <coughs> Except that when they walked in on Christmas morning, there were four plain white envelopes. One for mama and wife. And one from each one of the kids. And they all had on their inside something of what the inside of God with us is really all about. So have fun. Enjoy your gifts. Relish the trimmings. But for heaven's sakes, don't forget the inside. I want the Jesus outside me to be the Jesus inside me. And I want it now. Amen.